Robert Furon. Mitch, have you ever heard or witnessed the Bigfoots fighting over territory? I'd be interested to know what what you know about this. Okay, um, yes, there's uh, a couple of times I have uh, heard the battles going on, and uh, it's quite awesome to listen to the, the screaming and the trees breaking and the boulders shaking the ground when they hit and stuff like that. It's pretty awesome, but I've never seen it, never actually seen it. I might say that this kind of an event was what brought me up to the, this one particular place that I call the hot zone. Um, a couple spent the night in an outhouse uh, because they were up there using the outhouse when this kind of a commotion broke out. And uh, both of them jumped in the outhouse and closed the door. And they spent all night in the outhouse holding the door closed with their feet and their backs against the toilet seat uh, because the latch on the door didn't work. They couldn't secure it. So they were hoping that by holding it closed with their feet on the door that, uh, you know, it wouldn't come in. But at this particular time, they were not a point of interest. There was other things going on. And I think what the problem is is uh, over the last few years as all the forest fires have kind of concentrated the Bigfoot into a smaller and smaller area. And this area, uh, there's plenty of food. There's lots of deer, elk, and turkey, and berries, and all kinds of stuff, and uh, apples. And, and I've been helping this out in my Bigfoot Garden of Eden project, trying to uh, make more food for them. But... Um, I think the area is uh, getting kind of tight to the point where they think they need to to uh, basically have a dominus, dominancy show who, whose group is more dominant and try to drive the others out. Um, <clears throat> and this camp area that I camp in, I think is one of the prized possessions because people go in there to camp and then the Bigfoot will do something to scare them or spook them and the people will leave. I mean jump in their cars and go. And that uh, leaves the Bigfoot a chance to go through the food supplies and stuff like that and pick and choose uh, what foods they want. So and I've seen this actually happen a couple of times. One to a Boy Scout group and and uh, several times to other people. Of course, I'm too stubborn. I don't leave. And it doesn't seem to bother them that I stay. Um, so, kind of interesting. One more thing about these uh, uh, displays of force and so forth. Uh, I don't believe that they're meant for humans. I, I do believe it's more between each other. I don't believe they fight to the death. I think it's just a show of force, you know, like I'm bigger, badder, and meaner than you are, so I'm taking over. And uh, so they rip up boulders and stuff trying to convince each other that who's the biggest and baddest. Uh, because I've never found any blood, uh, you know, in, that would ensue from a big fight like that. Uh, I've, I've found the ground all torn up and everything. And by the way, these are not elk prints that are left behind. These are big, flat-footed prints. Uh, you might think it could be a bear, but these are much bigger than any bear of Arizona. Um, and some of them have been pretty clear. I have one footprint that I casted um, because it looked like it was um, being pushed. Um, you can see where the toes and stuff uh, were and the the whole footprint is elongated and kind of like a slide and the only thing I can figure there was it was it, it either jumped and slid up on impact or something was pushing it like a shoving match or something um, I have looked at, in some of these areas for other sign like hair and, and so forth and uh, I don't find any. 
uh, you know, I, I didn't look close enough to, to find a hair because I have Bigfoot hair. But I looked around for any signs of tufts of hair, uh, like it might have been yanked out or something like that. And I didn't find anything like that. What I did find is trees pushed over, boulders misplaced by 10 yards or so. Um, and I'm talking big boulders, larger than a basketball. And um, uh, trees broken in half or snapped. Lots of smaller saplings, probably, oh, four inches in diameter or so, uh, broken off and the limbs stripped off of them like they were either going to be used as clubs or possibly spears of some sort. So that's about all I know there. Okay, Samantha Antonell. Have you ever felt like you were being stalked or set up in some way by them? And what was your most aggressive encounter with them? And what do you think that triggered that response? Well, those are that's pretty good questions. Um, sometimes uh, they do have a sense of humor. And they like to play games with you. Sometimes it's a hide-and-seek game where they're trying to get you out and see if they can run you around and, and so forth, just having fun. Um, <clears throat> and other times there's more a more sinister motive behind uh, the calls and so forth. It might be that uh, they are not happy at you and they want to intimidate you into leaving. But, uh, yeah, in both cases, uh, you know, you've got to learn a little bit about the Bigfoot in that particular area is to find out just uh, how aggressive they are. Uh, yes, I think there's been a couple of times where they meant to do me harm. Uh, and then there are other times when I don't think so. Um, there might have been a time when an aggressive one was in the process of of um, getting at me, especially when I tried to rip the back door of the trailer off. Uh, and then it was maybe, I'm not sure, but it might have been called off by a more reasonable thinking Bigfoot. You know, I can't prove that or not, but the um, the actual attack ceased when all he really had to do was yank on that door one more time and it would have come open. The mounting bolts were on the last few threads and it was, you know, I could have opened it. So, um, yeah, sometimes they can uh, lead you out there to nowhere and, and uh, possibly do you in or they just might be playing games with you. Uh, most aggressive encounter, well, I mentioned the attack on the trailer. Um, I don't know what caused that. However, uh, there was a time when my other equipment trailer was skewered by a spear. <clears throat> and that spear was probably three inches in diameter, about six feet long, made out of a tree that had all of the, uh, the limbs stripped off of it. And it did penetrate the wall of the the trailer uh, and went inside of the trailer however it was only equipment there was no uh, no people or anything that stayed in that trailer what was it for well that happened the night that I had been in the nest and, and found the baby inside and I think that was more of a message um, you know just you think about it for a little while and the kind of message that kind of leaves to you so, thanks for the question.